Hello, everybody. This is Code2J. Welcome to the Airflow tutorial for beginner full course. In this two-hour course, we combine theory, explanation, and practical demos. You don't need any prerequisite to start this course, but basic Python knowledge is recommended to help you get started quickly as an absolute beginner. To make the most out of it, it is highly encouraged to follow and try out the hands-on examples. In the description, you will find the link to the course GitHub repository, which contains the source code of all examples. All the hands-on demos are based on the latest Airflow version 2.0. Throughout the course, you will be given an introduction to Apache Airflow and how to run it locally in the Python environment and Docker container by practical examples. Then you will also learn about the Airflow core concepts, task lifecycle, and basic architecture. After that, we will show you how to build Airflow DAG with different operators like Bash and Python operators, and how to share data between tasks using XCOMs via demos. Also, the new feature introduced since Airflow 2.0, TaskFlow API, will be covered with an example. Then you will learn Airflow DAG, catch up, back view, and how to schedule DAG with the cron expression. After that, we will teach you how to connect to external services like Postgres database and AWS S3 via Airflow connection using demos. Then we share the tips on how to install Python packages in the Airflow Docker container. In the end, we will cover how to use Airflow hooks with examples of Postgres and S3. Make sure you subscribe and smash the like button. If we hit 1000 likes, I will do a video about how to debug Airflow DAG. If we hit 5,000 likes, I will do a video about Airflow Docker Operator. Sounds exciting? Let's get started. So what is Apache Airflow? It is an open sourced tool which we can create, schedule, and monitor many kinds of workflow. It is the perfect tool to use when we have a workflow with tasks one, two, three, which should be run periodically in specific order. Airflow is based on Python. If you already have some coding experience with Python, you are good to go. Okay, let's get started. First of all, let's create a Python project and install Airflow. I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. To create a project folder and open it. And I will name it Airflow Tutorial on the desktop directory. Let's open a terminal and check whether I am in the right directory or not by command PWD. Since Airflow 2.1 requires a Python version above 3.6, let's check my Python 3 version by command Python 3 minus minus version. As we can see, my local Python 3 version is 3.6.7 and meets the requirements. That's great. You can also use version 3.7 or 3.8. Let's create a Python environment with command python3 minus m vinf with environment folder named py underscore inf. Once created successfully, we can see the py underscore inf folder in the explore section. Now let's active the Python environment Use command source py underscore inf bin active. 
When activated, we can see the py underscore inf on the very left of the terminal prompt. Next step, I'm going to install Airflow locally. Let's open browser and search Apache Airflow official GitHub repository. And navigate to the install section. I will copy the install command and paste it in the terminal. Before executing, I have to change the dependency to man match my local Python version. Instead of 3.7, we change to 3.6. Oops, there's an error of missing G GCC. To solve this problem, I have to run command xcode minus select install to install Mac OS command line tools. The installation takes a couple of minutes. After that, we execute the pips install command again. This time, there's no error. Therefore, Airflow is installed successfully. Okay, next step, I'm going to initialize the database for Airflow. Before that, we have to indicate the Airflow home directory. By default, it will create a folder Airflow in home directory. However, I would like to have everything in my project directory. So I export the Airflow home environment variable to my current directory. Then I will initialize the database with command Airflow DB init. This command will create a SQLite database, a log folder, and some configuration files. Next, I will start Airflow web server by command Airflow web server minus P8080. By default, 8080 is the port to be used. If you want, you can also other, use other port, for example, 8088, 8082 as you wish. Then let's open the link in the browser. It requires me username and password to log in. OK, let's go back into the terminal, stop the Airflow web server and create one user by command Airflow users create and give value to parameters as shown in the help output. By setting the password, we start the Airflow web server again, and we are ready to sign in. It looks great. I can see all the example decks, but over that, it says, there's no schedule running. Okay, in order to execute the DAX, we have to start the Airflow scheduler. Let's go back to VS Code, open another terminal. First, we have to make sure we export the Airflow home environment variable as we did in the first terminal. Then, we execute the command Airflow Scheduler. Now, let's go back to browser and refresh the page.
we can see, boom, the message is gone. It means the scheduler is running properly. Let's turn on one example DAC by clicking the button before the DAC. From the tree view, we can see this DAC has multiple tasks. When we click the refresh button on the right hand side, we can see the tasks have been scheduled and executed. And it has been marked as dark green once it has been run successfully. Let's open VS Code, create a project name on my desktop directory and open it. I'm going to name it Airflow underscore Docker. Let's open the terminal and check whether we are in the right directory or not by command pwd. As we can see, we are inside of our project directory. That's great. Then I'm going to open Apache Airflow's official website and look for the documentation. We click the quick star section. Instead of running Airflow locally, we are going to install it in with Docker. So we click running Airflow in Docker. Before we actually do the installation, we have to install Docker and Docker Compose in our laptop. No worries, it's just as simple as you install any other software. If you are running with a Mac or a Windows laptop, what you need to install is just the Docker desktop application. You can find the download link in the description for both Windows and Mac OS. Once you download the file, just double click and follow the installation steps. Okay, as I already have it installed, I'm going to launch the Docker desktop application. It might take less than a minute or more, depending on how powerful your laptop is. Once started, we can see the Docker icon on the menu bar. When clicked, it indicates the status of Docker. When you see the green text which says Docker Desktop is running, we can go back to VS Code to check Docker and Docker Compose versions by command Docker minus minus version and Docker Compose minus minus version. If you see the version output, it means you have a running Docker and Docker Compose. Now we should have all the preparation work done. Let's go back to the Airflow documentation and download the official Docker Compose YAML file by copying the cool command and paste in the terminal. And then enter to execute it. Once successfully, we can see the Docker Compose file has been downloaded in our project directory. Let's open the YAML file. We can see it defines many services and composes them in a proper way. By default, the YAML file defines Airflow with Celery Executor. To make it simple, we are going to use Local Executor. Therefore, I'm going to change the core executor from Celery Executor to Local Executor. And we don't need Celery Result Backend, Celery Broke URL for Local Executor. So we delete them. Redis is necessary for Celery. We don't need it either. So delete its dependency and definition. And we also don't need Celery Worker and Flower. We are going to remove them. That's it. We save the YAML file and are ready to go. I suggest you pay attention to these steps and watch back and forth to avoid missing any of them. You can also find a GitHub repository link in the description below by which you can get the final version of the YAML file. Okay, next step. 
we need to create folders for DAX, logs, and plugins, which are quite self-explanatory. Saving Airflow DAX, logs, and customized plugins. Just copy the command, paste in the terminal, and execute it. We can see all the folders have been created successfully under our project directory. Echo the Airflow user ID and group ID to env file is only necessary when you are using Linux OS. I'm using Mac OS, so I just skip this step. Next, we are going to initialize the database by the command docker compose up airflow init. We can see that it is going to download all the necessary Docker images and set up an admin user with Airflow as the username and password. Once you can see the Airflow init is exited with code zero, it means the database initialization is complete. Next, which is the most exciting step, we are going to run the Airflow with command docker compose up minus D, which means in detached mode, running containers in background. Let's check what containers are running by command docker ps. We can see from the output that there's an Airflow web server, Airflow scheduler, and a Postgres database. Let's open the browser and input 0.0.0.0.8080 port to check our Airflow web server. In the meantime, we can also open Docker dashboard. Here we can also see all the running containers in our Airflow project. We type username and password Airflow to login. Boom! We can see that Airflow is running properly in Docker. We can see all the example DAX. Let's pick the first one and start it. When we click the refresh button, we can see the tasks have been scheduled and executed. In the end, the successful DAG and task run have been marked in dark green. That's awesome. Congratulations, you have got Airflow running successfully in Docker. To better understand the core concept, let's recap what Airflow is, where and how does it come from. Airflow starts as Airbnb's internal tool to manage increasingly complex workflows in 2014. From the beginning, the project was made open source becoming an Apache incubator project in March 2016 and a top-level Apache Software Foundation project in January 2019. Airflow is one of the most popular workflow management platforms and it is written in Python. Since its goal is to manage workflow, but what is workflow? Workflow is a sequence of tasks. In Airflow, workflow is defined as DAG, namely directed acyclic graph. For instance, we have a workflow which starts with task A, when A finishes, followed by task B and C. When B and C finish, executing the final task D and E. However, when task D finishes, it is not allowed to run task A again since it creates a cycle. Likewise, task C cannot be followed back by task A. Therefore, DAG is a collection of all the tasks you want to run, organized in a way that reflects their relationships and dependencies. But what is task and operator? A task defines as a unit of work within a DAG, as shown in an example DAG. It is represented as a node in the DAG graph, and it is written in Python. And there's a dependency between tasks. For example, 
Task C is the downstream of task A. Task C is also the upstream of task E. The goal of the task is to achieve a specific thing. The method it uses is called operator. While DAX describe how to run a workflow, operators determine what actually gets done by a task. In Airflow, there are many kinds of operators, like Bash operator, Python operator, and you can also write your own customized operator. Each task is an implementation of an operator, for example, a Python operator to execute some Python code, or a bash operator to run a bash command. To sum up, the operator determines what is going to be done. The task implements an operator by defining specific values for that operator. And DAG is a collection of all the tasks you want to run, organized in a way that reflects their relationships and dependencies. But what is execution date? DAG run and task instance. The execution date is the logic date and time which the DAG run and its task instances are running for. For example, we might currently have three DAG runs that are in progress for 2021 January 1st to 2021 January 3rd. A task instance is a run of a task at a specific point of time, namely execution date. A DAG run is an instantiation of a DAG containing task instances that run for a specific execution date. That's it. These are the most essential concepts that you need to know about Airflow. When a DAG run is triggered, its tasks are going to be executed one after another according to their dependencies. Each task will go through different stages from start to completion. Every stage indicates a specific status of the task instance. For example, when the task is in progress, its status is running. When the task has been finished flawlessly, it has a success status and so on. There are in total 11 different kinds of stages. In Airflow UI, graph and tree views, these stages are displayed by a color represents each stage. In the early phase, a task might go through from no status to queued. After that, a task will be at the execution phase from running to success. If the task fails, it will be di directed into up for retrial, upstream failed, or up for reschedule. And during the task lifecycle, if we manually abort or skip it, the task will be in a status of shutdown or skipped accordingly. Let's have a closer look and explain each of them in the task lifecycle diagram. As I just said, a task is usually starting with no status, which means the scheduler creates an empty task instance. After that, there are four different stages that the task can be moved on. They are scheduled, removed, upstream failed, or skipped. Scheduled means that the scheduler determined task instance needs to be wrong. Upstream failed once the task's upstream task failed. Skipped if the task is skipped or removed when the task have, has been removed. If the task is luckily enough to be scheduled, then the executor kicks in, which puts the task into the task queue, and the task's status change to queued. After that, the worker will execute the task once it is free. Free means the worker's computation resources are not fully occupied. At this stage, the task's status is running. Based on the execution results, there will be three possible stages. Success, failed, or shutdown, which is very straightforward. Success means the tasks complete flawlessly. Failed 
means the task fails, and shutdown if the task run has been aborted. In the case of the task in stages failed or shut down, if the maximum retry is not exceeded, the task will be forwarded to up for retrial stage, which means the task will be scheduled and rerun after a certain waiting time. In some specific cases, a task in the running stage can also be directed in the up for rescheduled stage, which means the task will be rescheduled every certain time interval. A simple example for this use case would be that you will never move forward the task unless a file has been saved in a S3 bucket. So you want to check the file's existence every 10 seconds, for instance, using a censored task. To sum up, a happy workflow execution process will be starting with no status then the scheduler scheduled the task, after which the executor puts the task into the task queue. Once the worker picks up the task and executed it flawlessly, we will receive a happy task process. Okay, we now understand the complete life cycle of the task of Airflow. Let's dive into the basic architecture of the Airflow. We have mentioned lots of components in the previous videos when we talk about Airflow, and you can also find such a diagram on the Airflow official documentation site. On the diagram, you can see things like the data engineer, web server, scheduler, worker, DAX, and etc. What is the responsibility of each one, and how do they actually work together? First of all, we need someone called data engineer, like you, to start building and monitoring all the ETL process. Data engineers have to configure the Airflow setup, like the type of executor, which database to use, and etc. Data engineers create and manage the DAX they authored through the Airflow user interface, which is supported by the web server. In addition to that, the DAX are also visible to the scheduler and workers, which change the task's status during the whole task lifecycle. Apart from that, there's a component called Executor. In order to persistent the update and retrieve the info of the DAX, those four components are connected to the database closely. There are a variety of database engines you can choose, like MySQL, Postgres. That's it. This is the basic architecture of the Apache Airflow and how the most essential components work together. First, let's open our project folder in VS Code. And then we launch the Airflow by command docker compose up minus d. After that, we open the link localhost 8080 port in the browser. It might take some seconds, but in the end, we can see the Airflow admin login page. After we put the username and password Airflow that we created, we can see all the example DAGs. Since we are going to create our own DAG, let's remove all the example DAGs. We go back to the VS Code terminal, type docker compose done minus V. Minus V means that we are not only shutting down the Airflow containers, but also removing the volumes we defined in our Docker Compose YAML file. Then we change the value of Airflow core load examples in the YAML file from true to false. Then we init the Airflow by command Docker Compose up Airflow minus init. After that, we launch Airflow again using docker-compose up-d. 
after we refresh the page and login, we now see no example DAG is loaded. That's great. Next, we are going to create our first DAG. Now, let's go back to VS Code. In Airflow, Airflow DAG is defined as a Python file under the DAGs folder. Therefore, let's create one called our first DAG.py and open it. A DAG implementation is an instantiation of the class DAG. Therefore, we have to firstly import the DAG from Airflow. Then, we create an instance of DAG using the with statement. In this case, all the following code will be under the scope of our DAG in this instance. We have to give values to a couple of parameters. Let's type our first DAG as the unique DAG ID and describe our DAG as this is our first Airflow DAG that we write. After that, we have to decide when we want to start our DAG and how often we want to execute it. Let's first import data time from data time package. Let's say we want to start our DAC from the 30th of July and run it every day at 2 a.m. We basically set the parameter start date equal data time 2021 July 30 and 2 and scheduler interval equal at daily. Apart from that, we would also like to define the common parameters which will be used to initialize the operator in default odds. For example, we want to set the owner of the DAG as code 2j, the maximum time of retrials is 5 and retry delay will be 5 minutes. For retry delay, we need to import the time data from the data time package and set the 2 minutes as the wait time for every retry. Then we set the DAX default arcs equals to our defined default arcs dictionary variable. Next, let's create a simple task for our DAG. We will use bash operator to execute some bash commands. Therefore, we have to import bash operator first. A task is an implementation of an operator. So let's create a very simple task, print out a message, hello world, this is the first task. Let's type task1 equals bash operator. We first have to set the task ID equals first underscore task. Then we set the bash command equals echo hello world. This is the first task. Let's go back to our browser and refresh. Oops, we found errors in our code. Let's click it and see the details. It says that there's no module named airflow.operator. Let's go back to VS Code and change operator to operators. Refresh again, the error message is not the same, which means we fixed the bash operator import error. The new message says that minute is the invalid argument for time data. I think it should be minutes, not minute. Let's try and refresh. Now the time data error is fixed, but we got another error with an unexpected keyword argument, scheduler underscore interval. 
let's fix this by change the argument to schedule underscore interval and refresh. Boom! We have no errors and finally see our first deck shows up. We can see there's only one task named first underscore task in the tree view. Let's turn on our first deck. We can see that our first deck will be executed from the start date July 30th midnight all the way up to yesterday midnight. If we select one of the successful task runs and open the execution log, we can see the hello world this is the first task message has been printed out. In general, an ETL process consists of multiple tasks. Let's create our second task, which will be executed after the success of task 1. After the definition code of task 1, we type task 2 equals to bash operator. We put second underscore task as the task ID and the simple bash command says, I'm the second task and I will be running after the task one. Now that we have defined task two, let's build the task dependency. To achieve this, we can set task two as the downstream of task one or task one as the upstream as task 2. In order to not mess up the version of DAG, let's change the DAG ID to our first DAG version 2. Let's go back to the browser and refresh. You can see there are two DAGs now, our first DAG and our first DAG version 2. From the graph view, we can see task 2 is after task 1 which is exactly what we wanted. Let's start the DAG. Once it is complete, we can see task 2 will be run only after the success of task 1. Let's check the execution log. The log shows that the execution date time of task 2 is later than of task 1. What if we want to have three tasks and task two and three will be run once task one finishes? Let's go back to VS Code and add task three and build the dependencies. We will create our third task with bash command echo. Hey, I'm the task three and I will be running after task one at the same time as task two. There are many ways we can build the task dependency. Let's try our first method. Basically add the task 3 as the downstream of task 1. We change the tag version, refresh the page and see that task 1 is followed by tasks 2 and 3 in the graph view. Let's start the DAG and all the tasks will be executed follows the dependencies. Let's check the execution log of task 3. The message has been successfully printed out and the execution date time of task 3 and 2 is later than that of task 1. Let's go back VS Code and try the second method with the bit shift operator. Task 1 write shift to task 2 and task 1 write shift to task 3, which means task 2 and 3 are the downstream tasks of task 1. Let's change the DAG ID version and refresh the page again. We can confirm the correct task dependencies in the graph view. Let's go back one more time and introduce our third method which is the adjusted version of the second method. We can convert the two line bit shift operator into one. With task one, write shift square bracket with task two, comma, task three inside of it.
go back to the browser and refresh, we can confirm the task dependencies are correctly configured. First, let's open our project folder in VS Code and check if Airflow is running by Docker PS. We can see the Airflow components are already up. If not, you can launch Airflow by command doc-compose up minus d and log in. Okay, we have running Airflow. Now let's go back to VS Code and create a Python file under the DAG folder called create underscore DAG underscore with underscore python underscore operator dot py and open it. We have to first import the DAG package and create an instance of DAG using the with statement, of course. Let's create a default acts dictionary variable. Set code to J as the owner, retries equals to five and five minutes for each retrial. Of course, we have to import data time and time data packages. We then set the DAX default acts equals to our defined default act. Let's give our DAG with Python operator version 01 as the DAG ID and describe it as our first DAG using Python operator. Then we set the start date of the DAG to yesterday, 2021 October 6, and schedule it daily. Let's define a simple Python function that we want to run as a task. Let's name it as greet, which will print out a hello world string when it is executed. Okay, what's next? Let's create a task using Python operator to run our greet function. We have to import the Python operator module in the first place. Then we set the task ID to greet and basically pass our greet function name to the Python callable parameter. We are good to go. Let's go back to the browser and refresh our Airflow web server. We can see there's no error message and our DAG with Python operator version one DAG shows up. In the grab view, we can of course see that it has only one task named greet. Let's trigger the DAG and check the log of the task run. From the log, we can see that hello world has been printed out, which means our Python function indeed has been executed. In practice, we will use more complex Python functions with some parameters, for example. How do we pass the Python functions parameters using the Python operator? Let's go back to VS Code and update our greet function to take some parameters. We add name and age as the parameters and print out hello world. My name is name and I am age years old. In Python operator, there's a parameter called op keywords, which is a dictionary of keyword arguments that will get unpacked in the Python function. Let's set the name to Tom and set the age equals to 20. Update the version of our DAG and go back to the browser to refresh the Airflow web server. Let's trigger it and check its log. We found Hello world, my name is Tom and I am 20 years old, has been printed out. That's great. Our parameter values are passed successfully to our greet function using op keywords. You can basically pass all kinds of parameters that you defined in your Python function. We now know how to use Python operator 
to run our Python function and how to pass parameters to it. But can we share information between different tasks? Yes, we can achieve this using Airflow XCOMS. Basically, we can push information to XCOMS in one task and pull information in other tasks. By default, every function's return value will be automatically pushed into XCOMS. Let's go back to VS Code and create a new Python function called get underscore name. And we simply return Jerry as the name. Then we build a new task using Python operator to run it. Let's set its task ID equals to get underscore name. Python callable is get underscore name. We comment out task one and update the version of our DAC, of course. Let's refresh the Airflow web server, select the newest DAC and trigger it. In the log, we can see a line called done. Returned value was Jerry. Then we go to admins and xcoms. The return value of our function get underscore name has been pushed to xcoms. Let's go back to VS Code to pull the name Jerry in our greet function using xcom pull. Let's delete the name parameter and add ti which is the task instance since export can only be called by ti. Let's pull the name by typing name equals ti dot xcoms underscore pull and we have to set the task IDs equals to get underscore name. Basically to pull the return value of task with ID get name. We have to also uncommon the task one, remove the name parameter in the op keywords and build the dependency, namely task one is the task two's downstream, since we should first push and then pull the name. Update the DAC version and refresh the page. Trigger the DAC and check our log. Oops, we faced some issues. Let's see exactly what error is. The log says task instance has no attribute xcoms underscore pool. I think the pool function should be xcom underscore pool. Let's go back to VS Code to change it. Okay, refresh again and clear the first try of the greet task. Wait a second since it will run the greet task again. This time, it is executed successfully. Let's check the log again. We can see, hello world, my name is Jerry. I'm 20 years old. Name Jerry has been pulled successfully. Let's also check the xcoms. We can also see Jerry as the value and return value as the key. What if we want to push multiple values into xcoms? in one function. Can we distinguish them? Of course, yes. Let's go back to VS Code. And this time, we need to push first name and last name into xcoms. We have to first add task instance in our getName function and remove the return statement. Then we call ti.xcompush function by giving a key and value with first name and Jerry. Then we push our last name by calling it again with last name as the key and Fleetman as the value. Now let's pull those values in our greet function. We have to call the xcom pull function, of course. 
apart from giving get name to the task IDs, we have to tell it which key of the values to pull. Obviously, we put the first name from the key first name and last name from last name. Let's modify our print message to include first name and last name. Update the version of our DAG and save it. Refresh the browser and trigger it. Let's check the log. Boom! Our pushed name Jerry Friedman was included in the printout message. Let's double check the XCOMs. We can see that the pushed first name and last name have been distinguished by their unique key value. Let's also quickly update our code to get age via XCOMs instead of op keywax. We create another function called get age with task instance parameter. In the function body, we just push an age value 19 with age as the key. We then create a task for our get age function with Python operator with task ID of get age. Then we remove the op keywax of task one since we want to pull the age. Let's update the grid function by removing the age parameter and pull the age value via xcom pull with the key of age and the task IDs equals to get age. Update the task dependencies by adding the task 3 to the upstream of task 1. Then we update the version of our DAG and refresh the browser, triggering the DAG. From the log and xcoms, we can see all three values have been pushed and pulled successfully. Although it is very handy to use xcoms to share value between tasks, you should be aware that the maximum size of xcoms is only 48 kilobytes. Yes, you heard me right. It's 48 kilobytes, not megabyte or gigabyte. We can confirm this from the source code of Airflow XCOM. So never use XCOMs to share large data, for example, Pandas data frame. Otherwise, it will crash. Let's go back to VS Code. We can see that the create DAG with Python operator DAG has around 60 lines of code. Let's see how much code we can reduce by rewriting it using the task flow API. Let's create a Python file named DAG with task flow API.py under the DAG folder and open it. Then we have to import the DAG and task from Airflow decorators. We also need to create the default ox variable to define the retries and retry delay. Next, we have to define our DAG. Let's create a Python function called hello world etl with the DAG decorator above. In the DAG decorator, we will sign values to the DAG ID default ox start date and schedule interval. Inside this DAG function, we will create three tasks, get name, get age, and greet. Each task is represented by a Python function with the task decorator above. Let's create our first function, get name, which returns Jerry, then creating the function get age returns 19 as the age and of course don't forget to put the task decorator above and lastly our greet function with parameters name and age in the function body we print hello word my name is name and i am age years old that's it we have all the tasks defined but how can we build their dependencies
since the task flow API will automatically calculate the dependency, what we need to do is to call the get name and get age function to get the returned name and age variables. Then we pass them into the greet function as parameters. And don't forget the final step to create an instance of our DAG. Save it and let's go to the browser and refresh the page. Select the DAG we created and from the graph view, we can see the dependency is correctly defined. Let's turn on the DAG and wait for its execution. Once it finishes, we can check the log of the greet task, which has print out the message with the desired name, Jerry and age 19. Let's also check the XCOMs. We can see the returned name and age has been pushed into XCOMs. And the task flow API takes care of the XCOMs values push and pull operations. What if we want to return first name and last name instead of name in our get name task? Let's first to change the greet function to take first name, last name, and age parameters and update the greet message. Then we have to first put the multiple outputs parameter equals to true in the get name task decorator. Then we return a dictionary which includes a first name Jerry and last name Friedemann. Then we can get the name dict from the get name function, unpack it and pass them into the greet function parameters first name and last name. Let's update the DAG version and refresh the page in the browser. Turn on the newest DAG and wait for it to finish. Once it's done, open the log. Boom! We can see that there are first name Jerry and last name Friedman in the message. Let's also check the XCOMs. Not only the name dict has been pushed to XCOMs, but also the first name and last name with its key and value exist in the XCOMs. Now we have a rewrote version of the Python operator DAG with the task flow API. Let's go back to VS Code to compare them. We can see that the DAG version with task flow API only needs around 40 lines of code, which has reduced nearly a third of the code implementations of the previous version. Let's go back to VS Code to create a new DAG called DAG with catchup and backfill.py and open it. We firstly import every package we need. Then we create a very simple DAG with a simple task using bash operator. The current time is 2021 November 10th. We set the start day of the DAG to the past, which is November 1st and schedule it daily. In Airflow DAG, there's a parameter called catch up. By default, it is set to true. Let's set it manually anyway. Save the file and then go to the browser to refresh the page. Let's pick our DAG and show it in a tree view. Then we start the DAG. Click the refresh button and we can see that many DAG runs have been executed. Once it finishes, we hold the mouse over the deck run from the left to the right. We can see the deck's schedule and execution date are November 1st, November 2nd, all the way up to November 9th. Since November 10th is not fully passed, the latest deck run is November 9th. When the time is after November 11, 12 a.m., the November 10 DAG run will be scheduled and executed. Great! The catch-up feature helped us run the DAG since the start date November 1st. But how can we achieve this using the back view? 
let's go back to the VS Code to disable the catch up. Basically to change the catch up parameter to false. Then we update the DAC version. We are good to go to the browser to refresh the page and select our newest DAG. Let's check the code and verify that we have turned off the catch up. Then we start the DAG. Once it finishes, we can see that it only executed the DAG run on November 9th. That's correct, since we set false to the catch up parameter. But we can still run the DAG in the past using the back view command. Let's go back to the VS Code terminal to find the Airflow scheduler container by Docker PS. Then we open its bash interactively in the container by command docker exec minor it bash. From the prompt, we can see that we logged in as the user Airflow and the current directory is opt airflow. To backfill the DAG run, we need to execute the command airflow DAGs backfill with start day, end date, and the DAG ID. Let's backfill from 2021 November 1st to 2021 November 8th with our DAG ID. We click enter to execute the command. Once it finishes, we can see the log, back view it's done. We exit the container by the exit command, then go back to the browser and refresh the page. We can see DAG runs from 2021 November 1st to 2021 November 9th, with back field run from November 1st to November 8th and scheduled run November 9th. In Airflow, creating a DAG needs the schedule interval parameter, which receives a cron expression as a string or a data time time data object. So what is cron expression? A cron expression is a string comprising five fields separated by white space that represents a set of time, normally as a schedule to execute some routine. Airflow already provides some presets for the schedule interval, like at daily, at hourly, which is linked to its cron expression stream. So if you know how to use cron expressions, you can schedule your DAG in any way you want. Let's go back to VS Code and create a new DAG file called DAG with cron expression.py and open it. We firstly import any packages needed. Then we define the DAG with a simple task using the bash operator. We want to start our DAG at the November 1st, and then we schedule it daily with the Airflow cron preset at daily. Save the file, then we go to the browser and refresh the page. Let's select the DAG and start it. Wait until it finishes, we can see that the DAG has been executed from November 1st to yesterday, November 16th. Let's go back to VS Code to schedule our DAG daily using the cron expression stream. We change the schedule interval parameter from the at daily to the cron string 0, 0, and 3 starts separate by space. Update the DAG version and save the file. Let's refresh the browser and select the newest DAG. Then we start it. Once it finishes, we can see that the DAG execution history is exactly the same as the at daily preset. But how to generate customized schedule interval using the cron expression? Luckily, there's a website called crontab.guru which gives us a visual way to generate and verify the cron expression. Let's check it in the browser. In the text field, we can define our cron expression. 
Every time we give our input, it will automatically verify whether the input is valid or not. If we input the wrong syntax, the text field will turn red. Otherwise, it will interpret our input's Chrome expression and show its meaning in human language above the text field. Now, let's try to generate a Chrome expression which runs tasks weekly on Tuesday 3 a.m. in the morning and see the at 3 a.m. on Tuesday above. Let's go back to VS Code to change the schedule interval parameter to our customized Chrome expression. Update the DAC version and save it. Let's refresh the Airflow web server UI. We can pick the newest DAC, then start it. Once it finishes, we can see the DAC has been executed at 3 a.m. from the first Tuesday, November 2nd, to the latest Tuesday, November 9th. What if we want to run the DAC weekly but on multiple weekdays? For example, to schedule our DAC weekly on Tuesday and Friday at 3 a.m. We just need to add comma and Friday to our previous cron expression. Let's use the cron tab.guru to verify it. Yes, we can see the interpretation above says at 3 a.m. on Tuesday and Friday. What if we want to run our DAG weekly from Tuesday to Friday? We can also just simply add Wednesday and Thursday to it with comma in between. Or we can type Tuesday dash Friday. Both ways will work. Let's copy it and go back to VS Code to change our DAG's schedule interval. Then we update the DAG version. Go back to the browser to refresh the Airflow web server. Pick the newest DAG, start it, and wait for its execution to be finished. Once it is done, we can hold our mouse over the DAG runs, and we can see the DAG has been executed every Tuesday up to Friday from November 2nd. Normally, when we build an ETL DAG, we need to connect to some external services. For example, database servers like MySQL, Postgres, cloud servers like Azure, AWS, etc., and many other types of servers. To connect those, we need the credentials like host, username, password, port, and etc. You can create and manage them easily by Airflow connection, which can be used by corresponding operators. In Airflow web server UI, if we mouse over the admin, we can see the connections menu. Let's click it. Here you can see all the connections that have been created. Let's have a look at the add connection page by clicking the plus button. Here you can define the name of the connection and create whatever type of connection you want. If the connection type is missing, you can just install the corresponding provider packages or create your own customized connection. Just view all the necessary fields, click save. We can create a connection which is ready to be used. Okay, now you know what a connection is. Let's learn how to use it with Postgres operator. To demonstrate the Postgres operator, we need a Postgres database. Let's expose the Postgres database we used in the Airflow project by adding ports 5432, 5432 to the Postgres services in the Docker Compose YAML file. Then we can recreate the Postgres container Let's connect it use the dBeaver, which is an open source cross-platform database management tool. If you don't have it, just go to browser search dBeaver, click download and pick the one that matches with your operating system. I already have it. Let's launch it and create a new connection. We select PostgreSQL. Then we input localhost as host 
Username and password is Airflow. Then we click the test connection to verify it. It may ask you to install PostgreSQL JDBC driver if you don't have that. Just install it and try the test connection again. Once it says connected, we click finish. Then we can right click on the databases, click create new database. We name it test. If we expand it, we can see it is empty. Great, we have a brand new PostgreSQL database. Let's use an Outflow DAG to create a table and insert some values. Let's go back to VS Code and create a DAG file called DAG with Postgres operator.py and open it. First, we are going to import any packages we need. Then we define the default arcs. After that, we initialize a DAG by setting up its DAG ID, start day, and schedule interval. Let's create our first task using the Postgres operator. It requires mainly three parameters, task ID, of course, a connection ID to tell the operator which Postgres database to connect to, and a SQL query statement which will be executed. Let's go to the Airflow web server UI to create one. We click the plus button and give Postgres localhost as the connection ID. We have to select the connection type to Postgres. Schema is the database name. In our case, it's test. Username and password are Airflow. Port is 5432 as we did in the Docker Compose YAML file. For the host, we can either give the Postgres service name defined in the Docker Compose YAML file, which is Postgres in our case, or localhost. If we are using Docker desktop application or Mac OS or Windows to connect localhost from a container, using localhost will not work. Instead, we need to use host.docker.internal. Now click Save. We can see Postgres connection in the overview. Let's copy the connection ID and go back to VS Code. Set it to the Postgres connection ID parameter. Then in the SQR statement, we just create a table if not exists named DAG runs with column data time as a date and DAG ID data type character varying. And the primary key is the combination of data time and DAG ID columns. Save the file and go back to the browser to refresh the page. Select the DAG and start it. Oops, the task failed. Let's check the log and see what's wrong. It says, cannot translate the host name host.docker.local. We had a typo. It should be host.docker.internal. Let's fix it. Clear the task run and let it run again. Oops, it fails again. Let's check the log. It says we had a syntax error in our SQL query statement. We missed a T in the character variant data type. Let's go to VS Code to change it. Let's clear the task runs and wait for its execution. Now it succeeds finally. We can see from the log that our created table SQL query statement has been executed. Let's go to Dviver to verify it. Great. When we refresh the table, we can see it created the table deck runs exactly as we defined. Let's create another task which inserts the deck ID and 
execution date into the diagram tables using the Postgres operator. We set the task ID, Postgres connection ID, which will be the same. And in SQL, we type insert into deck runs, parenthesis, DT and comma deck ID values, parenthesis with DS in the double curly brackets and deck dot deck ID also in two curly brackets. DT is the deck runs execution date and deck ID is the deck ID, which are set by default by Airflow engine and can be accessed by putting the variable name into two curly brackets. Let's build the task dependencies, update the DAC version, then we go back to the browser to refresh the page. Select the newest DAC, we then start it. Oops, it fails. Let's check the log to see what the issue is. It says template DT is undefined. Let's search the Airflow macros documentation. The execution date template variable is DS, not DT. Let's go back to VS Code to update it. Then we go back to the browser to clear the current task runs and let it run again. Now it works. From the log, we can see there's one row inserted into the database table deck rounds with the execution date 2021 December 19th and the deck ID deck with Postgres operator version 2. Let's also clear and rerun the latest deck. Once it finishes, we can see it also succeeds inserting the correct execution date and DAC ID as shown in the log. Let's verify it using the debeaver. We select all the rows in the table DAC rounds. We can see the number of rows is the same as the number of DAC rounds. In Airflow, it is recommended to delete data before insert to avoid data duplication or primary key violation. For example, if we cleared one of the successful insert tasks, it tries to insert data which already exists in the table. In the end, it will fail since it violates the primary key constraint. Let's fix this by adding a delete task before insert. We can copy the insert task and rename its task ID and change the SQL from insert into delete from DAC rounds where DT equals DS and DAC ID equals DAC dot DAC ID. Then we rebuild the task dependencies with task 3 as the upstream of task 2 and downstream of task 1. Save the file, update the DAC version, and then refresh the page. Oops, we have an error. It says task 3 is not defined. Let's go back to VS Code to change our delete operator task variable name to task 3. Save the file, then refresh the page and select the newest DAG to start it. Once it finishes successfully, we can check in the debeaver. There are two rows for the newest DAG with date December 19th and 20th. Let's clear the December 19th DAG ROM. Wait for its execution. Boom! We can see it succeed without violating the primary key constraint since we delete before inserting data. Let's double check in the debeaver. We can see that we have exactly two records for the newest DAG ID. Hello everybody, this is Code2j. As we all know, the beauty of Python is its tons of excellent third-party packages. In our Airflow project, we definitely need those.
but how can we install them in our Airflow Docker container? Today I'm going to show you two ways to do that. Sounds exciting? Let's get started. In general, you can either extend or customize the Airflow Docker image to install your Python dependencies. Both of them have pros and cons. For example, extending the image only requires basic knowledge of Docker images. It doesn't need the Airflow source code and builds really fast. However, if you need to build from the Airflow sources or want to heavily optimize the image size, then you definitely need to customize. Let's first try to extend the Airflow Docker image. Let's go back to VS Code, open our Airflow project folder and create the requirements text file in which we can define the Python dependencies. Let's assume we need the scikit-learn package to do some machine learning model training. So we add a line in the requirements file with scikit-learn double equal 0.24.2. Next, we are going to install all the dependencies defined in the requirement file by extending the Airflow image. To do that, we have to create a Docker file in our project root folder and open it. Then we write from Apache Airflow 2.0.1, which tells Docker that we want to extend the official Airflow Docker image with version 2.0.1. Next, we need to copy the requirements text file in our project root folder to the Docker image using the copy command. Then we run the pip upgrade command to have the latest pip version and run the pip install to get all the Python dependencies installed. Save it and we have a perfectly defined Docker file which is ready to be built. Let's build the extended image by command docker build punct minus minus tag extending airflow latest. Basically, we tell the Docker to build an image using the Docker file existing in the current directory and name the image as extending airflow and version it as latest. It may take some minutes to finish. In the meanwhile, we can see from the log that it builds exactly the same steps as we defined in the Docker file. Once it finishes, we need to open our Docker Compose YAML file to change the image name from Apache Airflow to Extending Airflow latest version. Let's create a DAG file to verify whether the scikit-learn package has been installed. Let's initialize the DAG instance. And then create a function called get scikit-learn in which we print out the scikit-learn package version. Then we build a task using the Python operator to run this function. Save it, and we need to rebuild the Airflow web server and scheduler services since we modified the Airflow image name in the Docker Compose YAML file. Let's do it by command docker compose up minus d minus minus node depends minus minus build Airflow web server Airflow scheduler. Then we go back to the browser, log in and refresh the page. Trigger our newly created DAG and check the log. We can see the scikit-learn version has been printed out. What if we want to add more Python dependencies? Let's say we need matplotlib. Let's go back to VS Code. 
at matplotlib with version to the requirements text file. In the DAG, we create another Python function called getMatplotlib to print out the matplotlib version. Update the DAG version, go to the browser and refresh and trigger the newest DAG. Oops! Our getMatplotlib task failed. Let's open the log. We can see an error, no matplotlib package. Why does this happen? Because we changed our requirements text file locally, but not in our doc image and containers. So whenever we change our Python dependencies file, we have to rebuild the image. Let's do it by running the docker build command again. Then we have to rebuild the Airflow web server and scheduler containers by command docker compose up minus d minus minus node depends minus minus build Airflow web server Airflow scheduler. Clear the previous task runs and wait for the retry to finish. From the log, we can see the matplotlib version has been printed out successfully this time. That's it. We managed to install Python dependencies via extending Airflow image. How can we achieve this by customizing the Airflow image? Basically, we have to build it from Airflow source code. Let's open the second terminal in VS Code. CD to the directory desktop. Then we need to clone the Airflow source code. Let's Google the official Airflow GitHub repository and clone it. Make sure you have set up the SSH key properly. It may take some minutes, but we finally have it. Let's open it in a new VS Code window. First, we have to find the folder Docker context files since every Python dependency defined here will be installed automatically when building the image. Let's create a requirements text file in it and put scikit-learn and matplotlib packages with version info. Then we need to build the docker image by command docker build, comma, minus minus build arc, airflow version equals 2.0.1 and tag it as customizing Airflow latest version. Basically tell Docker to build the image with version Airflow 2.0.1 using the Docker file in the root directory and name the image as customizing Airflow version latest. It might take five minutes or more since it builds the image from the source. If you pay attention to the step trough of Airflow build image, you can see it installs all the Python dependencies defined in the requirements text file in the Docker context file folder. Next, we need to replace the Airflow image name in the Docker Compose YAML file. Let's go back to our Airflow project VS Code window and update that. Save the YAML file and we recreate the Docker containers for Airflow web server and scheduler by the command docker compose up build airflow web server airflow scheduler. Let's pick the same DAG and clear the previous DAG ROM. Wait for it to be rescheduled and executed. When we check the log, we can see both Python packages and their version have been printed out, which means they have been installed successfully. Okay, now you might wonder which way you should choose. Well, in my opinion, you can go with the first method in 99% of the cases, namely extending the image, because it is super fast and easy. However, if you want to have more things to be customized and really care about optimizing the image size, you need to customize the image. Sensor is a special type of operator which waits for something to occur. It is a perfect tool for use cases 
in which you don't know exact when the data will be available. For example, your client will upload a CSV file to the AWS S3 bucket daily, but can be at any time in the day. You basically need to check whether it is uploaded at a certain time interval before starting other tasks like downloading or cleaning. For simplicity, in this tutorial, we will use a S3 compatible open source solution called Minio instead of AWS S3. Minio is API compatible with AWS S3 cloud storage service. If you know how to build ETL with Minio, you can easily apply it into AWS S3. Moreover, we can easily set up a Minio service in a Docker container. Let's go to the browser, search for its official website. Then we go to Docs. Click Legacy Documentation. Here we can find the Minio Docker Quick Start Guide. Let's click it and we can see the example Docker command to launch a Minio Docker container. Copy it. We then go back to our VS Code. Open a new terminal. Paste the command. The Docker command basically runs a Minio Docker image, exposing two ports, 9000 and 9001, and set up the root username and password. Let's hit Enter to execute it. Once it is done, we can see the 9000 port is for the API, 9001 is for the console. Let's copy the console localhost URL and paste it in a browser. Then we can see a login page which requires us to input the, the root username and password. Let's copy them from the terminal and log in. Once logged in, we can see we have no S3 bucket. Let's create one by clicking the Create Bucket button. Let's name our bucket name Airflow. Then click Create a Bucket and we can see the bucket Airflow we created. Make sure we have the read and write permission. Then we click the Browser button here, we can either create a path or upload a file. Let's go back to VS Code to generate a CSV file, which will be uploaded later to our Airflow bucket. Let's first create a folder called data in our root project directory. Then we create a CSV file called data.csv with two columns product ID delivery DT with some rows just for demonstration. OK, save it and go back to the browser to drag the file from the folder to our Airflow bucket. Once uploaded successfully, we see the data.csv file exists in our Airflow bucket. Now we have a proper S3 bucket set up. Let's start building an Airflow DAG to connect to our S3 bucket and sense the file's existence. We first create a Python file called DAG with menu s3.py and open it. We need to import the necessary Python packages. Then we create the default arc variable. After that, we initialize the DAG with a proper DAG ID, start date, and at daily schedule interval. Next, we need to create a task using the S3 sensor operator. Since Minio is S3 API compatible, to connect to our Minio bucket, we 
can use the AWS S3 API, which is included in the Airflow Amazon Providers packages. Let's first make sure which version of the Amazon Airflow Provider package we installed it. Let's open our Docker Compose YAML file to change the Airflow image back to the latest extending Airflow or official Apache Airflow version 2.0.1. If you don't know how to extend the Airflow Docker images yet, let's check out my last video about that. Don't forget to recreate the Airflow web server and schedule by the command docker compose up minus D node depends build Airflow web server and Airflow scheduler. Then we find and copy the container ID of the Airflow scheduler by command docker ps. After that, we enter into the Airflow scheduler container by command docker exec id with the copied container id bash. On the left, we can see Airflow add container id, which means we are inside of the container. Let's run command pip list pipe rip amazon. The output shows we have an Airflow Amazon provider package with version 1.1.0 installed. It. That's great! Let's go to the browser and search for the Apache Airflow official documentation site. Here, below the Providers section, click the Amazon. On the top left, we change version to 1.1.0 to match our local installation. Then we check the Python API, look for sensor S3. We found airflow.providers.amazon.aws.sensors.s3 key and click it. Here we found the S3 key sensor which says wait for a key a file-like instance on S3 to be present in a S3 bucket. That's what we need exactly. To use it, we need a couple of parameters like bucket name, bucket key, AWS connection ID, etc. Let's copy the package directory and go back to VS Code to paste it. We basically need to import the S3 key sensor operator from the package directory. Let's build a task using the S3 key sensor. We set the task ID to sensor menu S3. Bucket name is Airflow. Bucket key is the file we want to sensor, which is data.csv. Then we need to set up an AWS S3 connection ID. Let's go to the Airflow UI from the admin connections. Click the plus button to add one. We set the menu connection as the connection ID name. For the connection type, we need to select a three. Then we only need to write a dictionary in the extra field, which consists of the AWS access key ID, AWS secret access key and host. Access key is the menu root username, and the secret key is the menu root password. Host is HTTP host.docker.internal with port 9000. Host.docker.internal is the local host since we are using Mac Docker desktop. 9000 is the port menu expose for the API connection. Save it. We then go back to VS Code to set our newly created S3 connection ID name to the AWS connection ID parameter. Save the DAG file. Then we go to the Airflow web server. Pick our newly created DAG and start it. Oops, the task fails. Let's open the log. It says expecting property name enclosed in double quotes. Okay, 
let's update our connection extra field from single quotes into double quotes. Clear the task and refresh. We can see the DAG run succeeded. Let's check the log. From the log, we can see it was checking the data.csv file existence in our Airflow S3 bucket using mode POCking. POC is the default mode for sensor operators. Basically, it checks the file's existence at every POC interval as long as it is within the timeout limit. Since the data.csv already exists in the Airflow bucket, it finishes immediately after the first pocking and it's marked as success. Let's go back to VS Code. Change the POC interval to 5 seconds and time out to 30 seconds. Update the DAC version and save it. Then we delete the data.csv from our Airflow bucket. Let's pick the newest DAC and start the sensor task again. Open the log and refresh a couple of times roughly every 5 seconds. We can see from the log, every 5 seconds it will POC the file until timeout and fails. Because it didn't find the data.csv file within the 30 seconds time limit in the Airflow bucket. What if the data.csv is uploaded during the POCking? Let's clear and rerun the sensor task. This time, we will wait for some seconds and upload the file to our Airflow bucket before timeout. We open the log and see it is already parking the file. Let's open the menu console to upload the CSV file. OK, it is uploaded. Let's check the sensor task run. Boom! It parked the file's existence right after we upload it. Then its task run was marked successful. I have a CSV file called orders, which contains artificial sales orders from March to June 2022. You can download it in the description below. It has four columns, order ID, date, product name, and quantity. We need to first import it into our Postgres database, then write a DAG to query data from it and upload it to our S3 bucket. Let's open dBeaver, connect to our Postgres database. If you don't know how to connect, check out this video. We are going to create a table called orders in the database test. Right click test and set as the default database. Check the toolbar to make sure the database test is selected. Then create a table called orders using the statement create a table if not exists public the orders and we define the four columns type correctly in the end we set order id as the primary key execute it without error refresh the test database and we can see the table orders have been created then we right click table orders select import data Choose import from CSV and select our orders CSV file. And match the column names. In the final step, we click proceed. We can see the import successful message. Let's query the first 100 rows for a double check. Great, we have set up our orders table properly. Next, let's create 
a DAG to query data from it. Let's go back to VS Code, create a Python file called DAG with Postgres hook.py and open it. Let's first import the required packages. Then we create the default ox. After that, we need to initialize the deck with proper start day, schedule interval, and etc. Let's create a Python function called Postgres to S3, in which we will do two steps. Step one is to query the order data from the Postgres database, save it as a text file. Step two is uploading the text file into the S3 bucket. We need Python operator to run our Python function, so let's import the Python operator packages. To query data from Postgres database, we need the Postgres hook. Let's check the version of the installed Postgres package. Type command docker ps to find the container ID of the Airflow scheduler. Then use command docker exec minus it container ID bash to enter the Airflow docker container. Then run the command pip list pipe grab postgres. We can see we have installed Postgres package version 1.0.1. .1. Let's go to the Airflow documentation site. Search and click the Postgres QL in the Providers Packages section. Select the version to match our local installation, which is 1.0.1. .1. Then click the Python API. Here we see two sub-packages, hooks and operators. Let's click hooks. The documentation shows the hook is used to interact with Postgres database and we can establish a connection to a Postgres database via the getConnection function. To initialize the Postgres hook, we need to provide the Postgres connection ID. Let's copy the whole class name, paste in our VS code, and update it to from airflow.providers.postgres.hooks.postgres import Postgres hook. Next, let's go to our Python function to initialize the Postgres hook with the Postgres connection ID, which is Postgres local host. We can get it from the admin connection page. Then we get the connection via the get connection function from the hook. After that, we get the cursor from the connection. What we need to do is to ask the cursor to execute our SQL query statement. Let's say we want to get all the order data before May 1st, 2022. We just need to put the query select from orders where date is smaller and equals to 2022, May 1st, into the cursor execution function. Then we write all the returned data into a text file using the CSV module. Let's first import CSV. Then we open a text file in write mode with name getOrders.txt in the folder dex. We get the CSV write first, then write the column name as the first row. After that, we write all the rest data in rows. In the end, we need to close the cursor and connection. Then we import the logging module and then write a log of Save orders in text file getOrders.txt. We have the step one implemented. Let's create a task using the Postgres operator 
to run our Python function. We call it tax1. Task ID is the Postgres to a3. Python callable is our function Postgres to a3. Let's go to the browser and refresh our Airflow web server. Oops, the error says we need to set the task ID. Let's check it in the VS Code. Ah, we mistakenly put deck ID instead of task ID. Let's fix it and go to the browser to refresh again. Pick our newest DAG, start it, and wait for its execution results. Oops, it fails. Let's check the log. It says SQL syntax near order. Let's go back to the VS Code. We need to correct the table name from order to orders and put the date inside a pair of single quote. Let's rerun the DAG again. Great! We saw it is successful now. Let's open the log. We see it says the order file has been saved in getOrders.txt file. Let's also rerun the latest DAG run and check its log. Great! Let's check our DAG folders in VS Code. We found only one getOrders.txt file which contains orders up to May 1st, 2022. The reason is that the second DAG run overrides the text file which was generated in the first one. Let's update our query to make sure we only get the orders data during a specific DAG run's execution interval and save them with a dynamic text file name so that they will not be overwritten. To achieve this, we have to give the current and next execution date to our Python function. Let's open the Airflow documentation, select the installed Airflow version, which is 2.0.1. Search for the Markwell, then click it. Here, we found all the predefined macros. Let's find the node-current and next execution date. Copy them and paste directly as the parameters of our Python function since Airflow will render those macros values during execution. Next, we need to update the query statement to have date conditions large and equal to the current execution date and smaller than the next execution date. Then we give the two macros parameter as the query params. After that, we need to make our text file name dynamic with execution date as the suffix and change the file name in the log. Let's save it and update our DAG version. Then go back to the browser to refresh the page. Select our newest DAG, start it and wait for its execution. We saw two successful DAG runs on April 30th and May 1st. Let's check the latest DAG runs log. We saw the orders have been saved in text file with 200501 as suffix. Going back to VS Code, we saw two text files in our DAG folder, each with the execution date as the suffix. Opening the text file, we saw it only contains the order data which is between current and next execution date. That's exactly what we want. Now, let's tackle step 2, which is uploading the order text file into the S3 bucket. Obviously, we need the S3 hook library to achieve this. Let's first check which version of the Amazon provider's package it's installed. First, we make sure that we entered into the Airflow scheduler Docker container. Then we run command pip list pipe grip Amazon. 
we can see the version is 1.1.0. Let's go to the Airflow documentation site, select Amazon, and change the version to 1.1.0 on the top left. Then we click the Python API. Here, we look for hooks for S3 and click it. The doc says it is to interact with AWS S3. To initialize the S3 hook, we need to set the AWS connection ID. Let's copy the class name and go back to VS Code to import the S3 hook module. Then we create a S3 hook instance with the S3 connection ID we created, which can be found easily in the Airflow web server connection page. Then we need a function which can upload our local text file into the S3 bucket. Let's go back to the S3 hook documentation and search for the keyword load. Then we find the function load file, which does exactly what we need, loads a local file to S3. What we need is to indicate which file, which bucket and key to upload, and whether we replace the file once it already exists. Let's go back to VS Code to implement it. We need to call the load file function from the S3 hook instance. We set the file name as the file we named, which is DAG get orders with execution date as the suffix text file. Bucket name is Airflow. Key as the orders execution day dot text. Basically, we upload all the orders text files in pass orders and named by its execution date. And we set replace to true to replace the file if it already exists. Update the DAC version, save it, and go back to the browser to refresh. Pick the newest DAC and start it. Once it is executed, we see there are three successful DAG runs since the date is already May 4th. Let's check the latest runs log. Here we can see the order data has been saved as text file. Let's go back to VS Code. We can see there are four orders text files. Let's go to our Airflow bucket. We can see there are also four text files inside the pass orders. We can download one of them and open it. Great, the file is exactly the same as the one in the VS Code project folder. It means we have achieved the second step successfully. This solution works perfect, except that I don't like to have a lot of text files saved in my DEX folder. Is there any way to keep my workspace clean? Yes, Python provides the tempo file package, which enables us to create files in a system temporary directory. Let's first import the named temporary file module from the tempo file package. Then, instead of creating the file in our DAX folder, we use the named temporary file to create the file object in write mode and we can give the execution date as the file suffix. Before we uploading the file to S3, we need to flush the file object so that the text file is saved in disk. Our S3 load file function should be inside of the named temporary file with statement, because the temporal file will be deleted once exiting the context manager. We can output the tempo file name by calling the name attribute of the file object. In the S3 load function, we just need to replace the file name to the temporary file name, which is f.name. Update the DAG version, save it, we go back to the browser. Let's refresh the page 
pick the nearest DAG. Before we start it, let's delete all the text files in our local DAGs folder and S3 bucket first. Then we start the DAG run and wait for its executions. We have seen the successful DAG run. Let's check one of the log. From the log, we can see the order's data was queried from the database and saved as a temporary file with the execution date as suffix, and then uploaded into our S3. Let's go back to VS Code. We can see our project folder is clean. There is no text file saved in our DAX folder. Let's check our S3 bucket. Download one of them. Open in a text editor. Here we can see each text file only contains all the orders records happens in the execution date. Great! Congratulations! You finished the course. I hope you enjoy the videos. If so, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Smash the like button. I will make new Airflow tutorial video if we achieve 1000 or 5000 likes. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you in the next one. Bye bye.